Hey guys, welcome back to another video where today I'm going to show you a programmable, infinitely expandable, and resettable 20Hz note block piano for Minecraft 1.16 and above. So what's unique about this note block piano in particular is that it can play a note block once every single game tick, which means that we can do things like hold notes. So I've set up this little chromatic scale that goes from the F sharp over there to an F sharp which is two octaves higher, which is the full range of the note blocks. So let's just hear that real quick. So as you can see, this piano was able to go all the way up and back down the chromatic scale and hold this note at the very end, which is very, very nice because that means that we're not just limited to playing one note block and have it go for a set duration. And instead, we can now hold them out very, very long, as long as we'd like to. And it sounds a lot better that way if that's what you're going for. But the chromatic scale is kind of boring. So behind me, I have what I originally set out to play on this piano when I made it. So this idea came to me when I was making the impostor pretty recently. And if you haven't seen that yet, then I recommend you check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description. But basically, it was an Among Us themed piston door that when it opened or closed, it would play Among Drip before it. But before I ended up using Among Drip as the song bef to play before, I wanted to play the choir part of Gangster's Paradise. So that's what I've made here, just a little bit late. So let's hear what that sounds like. So yeah, Gangster's Paradise of Minecraft, this is the peak of humanity right here. So now that I've shown you what this thing can do, I'm going to show you how it works. So over here is where we activate the note blocks once every game tick. So the way we do that is we use these four game tick clocks, which just use the observers facing into each other. And we activate them with one game tick of delay, because if there's four of them, and we activate them with one game tick of delay each, and they activate every four game ticks, then we can get one activation every single tick. So the way we get delay of one tick is we use these scaffoldings right here. So if you didn't know, basically scaffolding has a distance tag and it determines how far away they are from being supported. So this one over here has a distance tag of one because it's being supported by this one right here. And this one has a distance tag of zero because it's being supported by this block right here. This one has a distance tag of two because it's being supported by the one all over there. This one is three and this one is four. And basically it travels through at a rate of one game tick for every single scaffolding block. So that means that we can just get that exact delay of one game tick. And basically, the way that we actually change the distance tag is by opening and closing this trapdoor, because when it's closed, that would mean that this one would be supported, which would update all of these ones and a cascade going all the way across. And then when we unsupport it like it is right now, then this one will be non-supported anymore, and it will update all of these ones in the same order, just like it did before. But if we just left it like that, then we just have all of these note blocks constantly activating. So the way we silence them is with these redstone torches. These redstone torches are keeping them completely silent right now. And then if we activate this comparator right here, which will deactivate this redstone torch, this redstone line will be deactivated, which means they can actually get powered by the clock now. And then they will start going crazy, activating once every single game tick, like you saw just before. And then we can basically just mute and unmute them in the right order. And that means that we can make a fully functioning 20 hertz piano like we just did. So the way we actually program this is actually very, very simple. We just put it through a non-stockable item filter down here. So these ones will be the ones that will actually activate the note blocks. And these ones are basically just rests. So the way that works is it just goes through this non-stockable item filter down here. And then the non-stockable items will go through this path, which activates the comparator. But the normal ones will just go straight through here. And it takes the exact same amount of time for both the items to get to this chest. That means you can basically just store them in the exact same order they were in this chest over here, down here. And then we can just unlock the hoppers later, put them through a drop evader, and then reset it very, very easily all the way up here. And the way we actually get different pulse lengths is because if there's more items, then that means that the items that will be coming in a row will be constantly activating this comparator. And that means that they'll be unmuted for longer and it can play as long or as short as you'd like to. And the way that we actually unlock all these hoppers is also very, very simple. We just have a lever right here, which will turn on and off and activate or deactivate these hoppers right here through these target blocks. And we just have these repeaters set to the right delay so that they all deactivate and activate at the same time so that it sounds perfect because they're all activated at the right time 
and then they have the right amount of rest in between each one. So now that you know how it works, I'm going to explain how to use it. So down here is the clock that you'll need to activate before actually using it. So you can do that by activating that lever. Then will activate all of these observer clocks. And then when you want to actually play it, you can just unlock this repeater right here. And then once the song finishes again, you can just deactivate this lever right here, come back down here, and then you can activate your resetting system. And it's very, very loud, so I'm going to step away for a little bit. But if you come over here, then you can step into the danger zone a little bit and look inside of this chest. And once this refills with all of its items again, then you'll be safe to stop all of these dropper noises again because it's already finished resetting all the way. Okay, and there we go. So it's reset it all the way, and we can just stop it again by coming down here and activating this. And then when we want to turn this all the way off, let's say I don't want to activate anymore, then I can just turn off this clock again, and it's perfectly fine to use for the next time. Also, you can play this without the clock on, so that it's not a 20 hertz piano, but instead just a normal piano, except it plays on the falling edge of these resonant porches. So we can hear what that sounds like with this example right here. So yeah, as you can see, it was able to play all the way up and down again, except this time it wasn't able to hold the last note and played at where the note would end normally. So the way you could fix that instead of playing at the falling edge and playing at the rising edge instead is that you could replace this block right here with a repeater, which would be facing into this block. And that way, when the comparator gets activated, it activates the resonant repeater, which instantly activates all of this line of redstone. So now that I've shown you how this thing works, I'm going to show you how to build this thing. So the first thing you want to do is just place a block on the ground, make sure this is solid block, and then put a lever on the side with a trap door on the top, and then put scaffolding right here, and then go one, two, three, four blocks out from it like that. And then next to these scaffolding blocks, just put observers on the side, and then put pistons going upwards, and these have to be sticky pistons, and then put observers facing this direction again, and up here, just put some more observers, which will be facing in this direction right here. And then you can basically just expand it infinitely from this side with this little pattern right here. So basically we have the block that you want your note block to be playing with, and then the note blocks on top of them, and then a line of concrete right here, and one block out to the side like that, and then get a resin torch and put this resin torch right here, and then the resin line right here, and tune these note blocks to whatever note you want to. and then. You can do that on the other side as well, so you can just put a bunch of observers coming out of here. But you want to go out another block out of here on this side, and then you can put the same pattern over here, so just like this. And then this time put this line on the inside with a redstone torch on top, and then the redstone line on top of that, and tune them to whatever you want over here as well. And then you can also expand them out a little bit more if you want to use hoppers. So basically, you can just expand this out again just by putting hoppers at the end of this line, and then another line of observers right here, and then more of your note block block over here, and then note blocks on top, and then you can once again put the line with redstone on top right here. And then you can expand that on the other side as well, and basically just expand this as far as you'd like to. Then for each one of these little sections, just place a temporary block right here with a block below it, break this block, and then put a redstone comparator against here. Then you're going to want to go up one, two blocks right here, and then one, two blocks backwards with temporary blocks, and then put a chest on top, just like that, and break the temporary blocks. Then you're going to want to place a temporary block right here, with one, two, three more temporary blocks to the side, and break these blocks, and then put hoppers going like that against this temporary block, then break this temporary block, and go one, two, three, four hoppers just like that. Then just come right here and place a temporary block right here with the hopper going to the side and then a chest right here with another part of the chest right there so it forms a double chest and then break this temporary block and put another hopper facing into that chest. Then from this chest you're going to want to go one temporary block right there with two droppers on top of it and then replace this temporary block with a hopper going to these droppers over here and then come over to this side of the chest and put one, two, three droppers on top with a dropper facing this direction on the top of that. 
and then on the side of this, drop it right here, put two hoppers going to the side, and then on the side of this chest over here, put a hopper with another hopper facing into it from the side, which will be coming out of this dropper right here. Then come to the back of this hopper right here and place a temporary block right here with a block below it and a solid block on top, and break this block and put a comparator facing to the solid block with a piece of redstone dust on top, and then a block right here with a solid block right here, and two more pieces of redstone dust with a redstone torch right here, and then go a temporary block down with a transparent block on the ground right here, break this block right here, and put a redstone dust on top of it, and then put a block right here with a repeater on top of it, and put this repeater onto two ticks like that. Then, from the back of these two droppers, go one, two blocks backwards, and put an observer on the top of it, and break these two blocks, and put an observer going on the side of this other one right here, going into the top of this dropper right here, and then place a solid block right here with a piece of redstone dust on top, and a solid block on the side of that, and then put a hopper on the side of that with an observer facing inside of that hopper right there, and then another observer going upwards with another observer facing the side of it, just like that. Once you've done that, you will want to go two temporary blocks out from this observer right here, and then put a sticky piston facing this direction under the temporary blocks and break these temporary blocks. Then put a temporary block right here with a target on the bottom of it, break this block and put a redstone torch right here. Then come down here and then place a line of blocks that will basically just go under all of these little things that you're making with the redstone dust on the top of it right here. And then you're also going to want to place target blocks that go right underneath these hoppers along this line as well. And then you're going to want to build the rest of these little circuits right here. Once you've done that, it should look just like this. And then you're going to want to come down here to the target block that's closest to the center of this little area where there's two observers right next to each other. And then come to this block, place a block right here with a resin repeater on top, and then put a block right here with a lever on the other side of it. And then you're going to want to activate this lever so that all these pistons retract and these hoppers all activate because they're being locked through these target blocks. And then go underneath these pistons and place observers facing upwards, just like this. And then once you've done that, it should look just like this, with the observers at the end of the pistons and all the pistons retracted. Then you're going to want to place a temporary block on the edge of this target and then a block below it, and then break this block. And then you're going to want to make a redstone line going all the way across right next to these target blocks, except the blocks that are above the redstone torches should have transparent blocks on top. So just do it like this, with the normal blocks right here, a transparent block or the torch, and then at the end of here is where we've ended off because we've reached the last target block. And then just put redstone dust on this line right here, and then near the center, the one that doesn't have a target block next to it, you can just put a lever on the side of that, just like that, and then activate the lever. But if you have a really long redstone line and you need to expand it, then you can use redstone repeaters like I've done over here. So how I did that is at the end of this lever, I've just activated this repeater on two ticks. And then over here, I've activated it with one repeater and another repeater so we can extend it further across. And that basically means that we can use this to extend this redstone pulse, but still activate them all at the same time. So now you're going to want to build the little safety system for this thing. So to do that, just come down here and then put a repeater, which will be facing into this one down here, and then you can power it through a block right here, so that it's a little bit easier. And then you're just going to need to take the output from this lever right here, and connect it via a redstone torch connected to this lever, so we can just do that really simply right here, with a redstone torch right here. And then I guess we could just take this right here with a solid block, but that would go into this redstone torch, so we could use something like a button to redirect the redstone over here so that it won't go straight into this redstone torch. And then we can go down and around over here, and then just bring this redstone on top of the block that the repeater will be powered by, so that it will lock this repeater when this lever is off. And you can see a couple of other examples of how I did this over here. Um, if you'd like to look at this in more detail, you can use the world download, but over here I used the same thing, except this time I had to use it a little bit differently because otherwise, um, the redstone torch would just power this line, so I just used a redstone repeater, go and went into this block, and then put the redstone torch all the way over here, and then went down here and used the same button tactic to redirect the redstone, and then went into the same repeater. And then over here, I did something very, very similar. So you can see over here, I just went over here, I used the transparent blocks here so I didn't power this hopper, 
went down here with the redstone torch and the exact same thing even with the button redirecting the redstone and the reason i had to do that is because otherwise this hopper would be getting powered by this redstone line and we don't want to block those hoppers like that once you've done that you're pretty much done with this whole thing so now i'm just going to show you how you can actually program this thing so to do that you basically just have to put in the non-stackable items as the no and the more items you put the longer than those length will be so let's say we want four items worth of a note length and then i want to have a couple of rests like that so i'll just use a couple of non-stackable items and then i want to play a another note like that worth one item of a pulse and then if i want to have another rest then i have to have just one of a different type of item or a renamed version of the same item that's what i've been doing so it's a little bit easier to look at and then i can just put another two like that let's say i want to do that and then to actually use this you can just turn on this clock so that it actually plays multiple times every single tick. So let's just unlock this hopper to actually play it. So yeah, as you can see, it played exactly what, put, what we put into it. It didn't really sound that nice to listen to, but that's because we only used one note block and we didn't really go for a specific pattern. And then we can reset this thing just by unflicking this lever. And after a little bit, these should be coming in, and that's all of them. So we can just flick this lever again, and then we can play it again if we want to. And yeah, you can basically just do that on every single one of these chests, depending on what you want to play, and then adjust the notes according to what you want to play, as well as the instruments. But remember, you can't use instruments that have transparent blocks underneath them, like the glowstone one. Uh, or the tick noise from the glass because otherwise the signal wouldn't pass through this hopper and update this observer. But that's basically it for this video, so if you liked it then please leave a like and if you really enjoyed it then please subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!